and uh, at thirty thousand feet, we lose, we don't have any cabin pressure at night over ten thousand feet. If you lose cabin pressure, a panel over your head will fall down. Mm-hmm. Right. When that mass falls down, the first thing you all should be doing is putting the mass on yourself. Mm-hmm. Quit trying to save everybody. Why has always got black folk marching trying to save it? We're marching for gays. We're marching for women. We're marching for, for poor people. We're marching for the handicapped. And yet you only control one half of 1% of the wealth. You haven't got a snowball's chance. And in the, in the end of slavery, as I said, you had one half of 1%. Guess what? The average white person at that point in time had 3,500 times more wealth than the average black. That means that 99% of everything in this country was, was in the white society and is still in the white society. I don't care from, from Vermont all the way to California, San Diego. 98% of everything of value is locked in, in the white society. 87% of it's frozen, locked into white society. You can't get it out. So all you got to compete for is about 13% is up for grabs. Mm. And if black folk don't learn how to compete for that 13%, you are through. And right now, that's, that's what's happening around the world. You see all these, it's, we're going to implode in this country. Same thing happening now, happening in Germany with the Jews. And there was a book out called Hitler's Willing Execution to say the same thing. When certain kind of things began to happen to you as a group, you better be very careful. And they wrote that as a big, thick book and about, about what's going to happen. That's, and, and they started exterminating the Jews. Why? Because you got a group now that you all don't know about called uh, the Council of 300. What they want to do now is say, we got too many people on the earth, and we're going to start losing resources. There ain't going to be enough resources left. We got water. We're going to have water shortages coming. And when water shortages come, what follows that is food shortages. Right now, 20% of the world is suffering from water shortages. We're going to start having water shortages in this country. We have water shortages and have food shortages. So what the council and all these, government, all these rich people on the earth are saying is that we got to start getting rid of some of these people. We're going to start with the non-producers. Now, who are the non-producers in America? The only people in America that produces absolutely nothing except sweat is black folk. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, you, real. Though. I get what you're saying. I feel you. No, 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 no. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, right now, all of our people that are supposed to be successful, guess what? The only thing they produce is sweat. They're running with balls, football, basketball, baseball, tennis ball, <laughs> golf ball, singing dancing. and dance, singing and dancing, <laughs> producing sweat. Nobody's buying any damn sweat. <laughs> and how are you going to feed yourself? Right. We don't produce anything, we don't have any industries. And we had a chance to get industries in the 1700s when the Industrial Revolution went through Europe. Black folk were slaves. When the Industrial Revolution went through America in the 1800s, we were still enslaved. We own and control absolutely nothing. You don't think that's changing now a little bit? Oh, man, no. It's getting worse. As a matter of fact, let me, let me give you a difference. Right now, we got all these people that you're running for public office talking about. We got we to gotta, we gotta look for or, uh, eradicate poverty. You cannot eradicate poverty. Poverty is a fixed, it's a govern, it's a given. You cannot eradicate poverty. Why? <laughs> because just like you can't eradicate, you got an up, you got a down, you got an in, you got an out. That is a fix. You cannot change it. It's something, and they always got people want to eradicate poverty. Po- you, what you should be saying is leave poverty alone and go down and try to figure out how to get black folk out of poverty. Don't mm. be trying to eradicate poverty. Leave poverty alone and get blacks out. And see, so they, well, what we're gonna, what we need to have more equality. On a race-based society, you cannot have equality. It's impossible. Mm. The whole point of a race is a contest. That's right. See, a race, you don't go, you all don't go to the Kentucky Derby. They try to have all the horses being equal, do you? No, you, you know? want one to win. See, you, so you got it again. You're mm-hmm. a smart man. <laughs> you, you, you want to see who comes in first, second, or place. Right. And so yet they say, we're going to, well, in a race-based society, why is it called a race? race? is Race never started, never existed on the earth until the 1500s. See, and that's when it started. When a race, that's where racism comes from. <clears throat> they didn't pick racism just out of thin air. It's a social construct. It's a social construct. Yeah. It's a social construct. And they started. We can start. Well, what we're going to do now that Columbus discovered America? You got in fourteen ninety two. You got we got a lot of land over there. It's pretty much vacated, uh, vacant, and um, and we got and uh, we need to go over there and try to get that land. And what they said is, say, well, let's go back. How are we going to do it? <clears throat> and they said, well, let's see. Back in about fourteen, about 1446, we had a guy named Henry the Navigator. It went around the coast of Africa, and he, he picked up about 16 blacks, Africans, and brought, and brought them back to Europe, gave them to the Pope in the Vatican. And the Pope said, we use these as slaves. And so the, so the Vatican used blacks as slaves. That was one of the first ones as from about 1446 up to about 1488. Then Pope Innocent came out and said, well, you know, uh, 
happened to these people as slaves, that's a good thing. And so why is that important now? Because you see the Fox Channel be telling you all, why are blacks complaining about being slaves? We've always had slaves. No, you have not. You may have had slaves, but not based on skin color. Mm. And Pope Innocent came out and says, in the future, don't enslave anybody based on a traditional manner. You can only enslave people for being either a prisoner of war or for personal indebtedness or religious persecution. He said, let's skip that now and enslave them based on skin color. That was her start. That's her trigger in 1488. So when Columbus discovered America in 1492, <clears throat> he had all this land over here <clears throat> in that particular particular time. Yeah, water for you if you need. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Yes, sir. At that particular time, Europe was being decimated. Mm -hmm. Europe was under, under major problems. The entire European continent was being decimated with crime, crime, famine, diseases. They didn't know what to do in the late 14, 1400s and early 1500s. And all of a sudden they said, you know, since Pope Innocent says that um, – we got some people we can use now as slaves, and we got a. <clears throat> <clears throat> Take your time, brother. We here. We got time. I know y'all gonna put me out of here in a few. No, minutes. no, no you good. Man, we you got good. time. They've been waiting on you for years. You tell me a tale. No, I'm not. People been asking for you for years. We got time. Okay, I don't want. To, I don't want to take up all your time. No, you good. <laughs> Ain't no white man coming here with a sign saying, "Oh, get him up out of here." He's talking all this shit. <laughs> <clears throat> so um. So when Columbus discovered America, they had all this land, and Pope Innocent said, use these people, let's have a new form of slavery. No more long, no longer based on religion, personal indebtedness, or prisoner of war. Let's use them skin color. And so by the 1500s, they we can say use that and save America. So a race started. A race is a contest. Mm -hmm. That contest started between nine European nations. Mm. Portugal, they all said, let's get in the contest so we can go to the Americas, to the Americas first and capture all that land and build it, build wealth. That's what they came here for. Mm -hmm. Now, you all get by that stuff about they believe in about the Constitution, but they came here for religious persecution. Nobody came here for no damn religious persecution. They came here for happiness. Nobody can get on a damn boat and sail across the Atlantic coming to America for happiness. They ain't that stupid. They came here for enrichment. Every tourist and, I mean, uh, uh, immigrant came to America, they came here for personal enrichment. That's what they came here, to get values, resources. And they started bringing people. So all, the, all these countries were competing to try to capture America, Americas and build it up for enrichment. And, uh, and that's what happened when, so when, they, when America, when they got to America, they don't let me jump up. Now they said, well, we got all this land now. And we got these people. Let's draw the Constitution. That's what the, so they, so I told you a few minutes ago, they met in Philadelphia, says, let's take all this land. We're going to create a document called the US Constitution. That was in 1789. We're going to ratify this. And, uh, and we ratify it. <clears throat> it's going to be a social construct. That it brought here just mentioned to you. The construct is that how are we gonna do that? It's well at the top. Let's all the Europeans that got money and want to invest in the United States, they got rich people, then that'll be the top scale. They can come here and get all the land. That's Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, all those guys, and um, and Jet Thomas Jefferson. They were wealthy people. They said underneath that, that's the top level. Underneath that, we set up a management class to bring in poor whites. They'd be the management class. And at the bottom, we're gonna bring in these blacks. They have to be managed and classify them as property, as non-citizens. That way they'll never get anything. Mm. We got them locked in box. <clears throat> and that's in the Constitution. And that's how they got you. And the first thing they did the next year in 1791, <laughs> 1991, they passed the first immigration law. says, let's bring in all these poor people. This is a nation, an immigrant nation. It's for basically for whites only. And black folk, you are not citizens. You have no entitlements, no rights, and no privileges and nothing. Everything we put into the hands of the dumb to white society. Why is it expected for, for black wealth to drop in the future? Oh, for a certain reason, because <clears throat> increasingly they know that you don't own anything. <laughs> wealth creates wealth. Mm -hmm. Wealth creates wealth. And when they talk about slavery, what blacks, black, blacks don't have any wealth was because they took whites captures your wealth. Labor is wealth. Labor, you can't have wealth without labor. That's the point I'm going to bring to you. You said impossible to have wealth without labor. And so, so, when they, so, when they, so in the 1500s, they said, well, what are we going to do? We're going to all in this race now. We're going to compete between the, the French, the Germans, the, the British, the, the Spain, Spain. We're going to go to America. We're going to compete to get the resources. And so they, and they, and, uh, they said, let's take this. So what is, we're going to come up with a new thing called capitalism. Capitalism came out of the land, 
and the Pope Innocent's thing about slavery. 